I'd like to turn to Mark chapter 1, verse 1. So today we are going to do the Christmas story from the Gospel of Mark. I don't have it up on the screen, so if you're at home, open your Bibles. If you're just watching on your phone, it's only going to be a couple of verses, so. Matthew, Mark, Mark chapter 1. So there is a certain nostalgia that surrounds our celebration of Christmas. All the memories of Christmas past, that moment in our lives when everything just seemed simple and easy. One of my favorite Christmas movies is It's a Wonderful Life. In fact, it's one of my favorite movies of any kind. Now, it is a little campy. It has some terrible theology about angels and God. But it just, it makes me feel so good to imagine a world where a $5,000 bank shortfall can be overcome by the Christmas spirit, neighbors and families getting together. And you're just like, wow, that's so awesome. The interesting thing about the movie It's a Wonderful Life, as much as a Christmas classic as it's remembered, it was actually a flop and critically panned when it first came out. To its original audience, it seemed a little bit campy and over the top. I'll get you the last of the moon for you. It's only 20 years later when a lazy clerk for a movie company whose job it was to renew the copyrights or else they would expire after 20 years forgot to do their job. And so now the movie It's a Wonderful Life could be shown for free, and if there's anything that, that people, that uh, TV stations around Christmas like to do, it's to show free pr pre-made programming. And so they started running It's a Wonderful Life. Now, 20 years later, people watch the movie with a sort of nostalgic glee for the Christmas past when everything seemed so much simpler and magic was possible. Now, nostalgia is wonderful company, but a terrible drug. It's wonderful to walk through the past to remember, but it can also be a bit of a drug in that it supplants our present reality, causes a certain dissatisfaction, and leads us to keep, to take our eye off the ball that might just be about to hit us in the nose. Right about now, Many of us are beginning to mourn the reality that this Christmas will not be will not be like we would hope. Yes, COVID-19 stole Christmas. This will not likely be a year we look back to as this nostalgic Christmas of yore, although, you know... <laughs> God does his finest work in the tightest of circumstances. Because ultimately, Christmas is not about family, fun, nostalgic Christmas, all the feels of Christmas. It's not the fake snow of Bedford Falls or the Norman Rockwell painting of a family with a turkey or dancing to the slightly creepy baby it's cold outside. Check that. Dancing to the creepy baby it's cold outside. Because Christmas is not truly about any of these things. Lights and trees, lights and trees and warm feelings are not Christmas. It is about a fallen humanity being saved by a loving God. Today I'd like to preach you a short message about the Christmas story from the Gospel of Mark. Now, if you know the Bible, you know that there is no Christmas story in the Gospel of Mark. 
At least none would marry in Joseph and the angels and shepherds and wise men. Mark is the shortest gospel, and he is driving at, through his 16 short chapters, towards one point, and one point only, Jesus Christ died for sinners. He sums it up in Mark 10, 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth not to be served, but to serve. Not to get gifts from the wise men, not to be adored by the shepherds principally, but he came to serve in such a way as to give his life as a ransom for many. He didn't come principally to heal people, although he did that. He didn't come principally to teach, although he did that. Jesus Christ came into the world to give his life as a ransom for many. He came into the world because the world was in bondage to sin and Satan, justly condemned for their sin. Jesus came to them not as a caped superman, with impenetrable skin, unable to be harmed by the world. But Jesus comes as the suffering servant, taking on all of the harm of the world that he would then set free by faith in him alone. Mark's gospel simply begins, Mark 1.1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And Mark knows that Jesus is the son of Mary. And when he was writing, like that was common knowledge. He's writing pretty soon after the events. He knows he grew up in Nazareth. He knows it's Mark's Peter's interpreter. He knows all of this stuff going on from Jesus' youth. But he wants to drive directly to his point that Jesus Christ, carpenter, built houses with Joseph, is the son of God. And so in a way, Mark is celebrating Christmas, but he's celebrating Christmas of the baby who's the Son of God, not just the Son of Man. Like all of the Gospels, Mark would quickly deal with John the Baptist's mission in preparing the way of the Lord and go through Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. But a mere 14 verses in, Mark begins driving home a point he would never deviate from in his gospel. Mark 14, 1, or Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. The time is fulfilled. Repent and believe the gospel. Now there's obviously a time for speaking of angels and shepherds and wise men. All these things are good and in God's word. But Mark begins this story of Jesus with this one point. The gospel is here. The kingdom has come. Repent, believe the gospel. The coming of Jesus Christ signaled the beginning of the end of time. From the moment he stepped on the earth, from the moment he stepped on the earth, the time was beginning to grow short. He wouldn't bring the judgment that is coming and he is going to bring but he fulfilled the mission of a suffering servant taking on the sins of the people Jesus says that the kingdom of God is at hand now this is the promise of the everlasting kingdom that Jesus started which was foretold all the way back in Genesis 49 that the scepter would not depart from Judah and goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden where 
the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. Jesus' kingdom is here, and we are still today tasked to bring the message to the whole world to repent and believe the gospel. Jesus is announcing the kingdom of God and the beginning of the end as a simple message to repent and believe the gospel. Gospel literally means good news. Good news. Balm for weary sinners. The messianic age has arrived, and this is the message of Christmas, that the Messiah has come. And even though the news might speak of dread and disaster befalling the world, we need not crouch down in fear because we know Christmas, the Messiah has come, and we need not give way to fear. When we know that Christ has come, fear is done. COVID can't actually cancel Christmas. Because Christmas, in its most pure essence, is something that has already happened. We live in the Christmas age. The age of the Christ, the Messiah, who has come and begun his kingdom. No one can cancel Christ. Despite rumors of great change, despite economic upheaval, despite the world shifting in so many ways, Christmas is here and nothing can take that away. We need not let our thoughts run to and fro. Because Christmas is here, Jesus' kingdom is alive and active, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It will not be destroyed by any scheme of Satan or any plans of men. So we know we live in the Christmas age, and we can rejoice every day because of this. We need not fear raging disease. These things aren't even a hiccup to God's plan because Christmas has come. Now, this news of Christmas, and it's like the kingdom of God is at hand. This news, there are, there are two kinds of news that we get. There's the kind of news that's interesting. And most of the news that we get is actually kind of like, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so, interesting news, I flip open the thing and be like, oh, uh, Jalen Hurts is starting for the Philadelphia Eagles today. I flip on my, like, news reader. And that's how the news is kind of like, interesting, and I just go about, because there's the news that we just hear, and we're like, oh, that's interesting. But then there's the kind of news that changes your actions. It makes you live differently. If somebody said, there's a volcano at the top of the hill, and it's about to drown us all in a giant steaming pool of lava, and we're all going to die, we would all start running away. <laughs> Because that's the guy, we hear that news and we're like, ah, I am doing something about that news. And the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, is the second kind of news. It's the kind of news that makes you do something. Jesus gives the imperative. He says, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, this is the two actions, repent and believe the gospel. To repent is at first an emotion. It's not just an emotion, but it starts as an emotion. It's sorrow for wrongdoing. It's an acknowledgement that there is guilt in your soul, that you cannot scrub clean no matter how hard you scrub and no matter how, hard, how high you pile your pile of good deeds, and that you see that and you know it and it cuts you to the core. It's ultimately a work of the Spirit, but it cuts you to the core. And then it proceeds from being an emotion to becoming an action of a resolute turn and following of Jesus Christ. In the most literal sense, the example we get of repentance in the Bible is the disciples. There they are, mending their nets. They're doing their Jesus is like, come follow me. And they put down their nets and they start following him. 
They go from this one course where it's just about, I'm fishing all these nets, and now they're going on this course following Jesus. And so we start the repentance, sorrow for sin, following Jesus. And it's amazing because in the following Jesus that the sorrow for sin turns to joy as it becomes about what Jesus is doing and not about what we have done. Christianity is about what Jesus is doing, not what we have done. The final action of Jesus' message is to believe the gospel. A belief here is not just accepting some idea. And so often a lot of like the Christmas, we talk about like the war on Christmas, it's sort of like, boy, I wish people would just accept the idea that Jesus is really awesome. And like that's something, but that's not actually what the belief here. It's not just be like, oh yeah, I like the idea of Jesus. It's the, I love Jesus and it's going to change how I live because I love him so much. I'm no longer just going to live for myself and give lip service to Jesus. Like, Jesus doesn't care how many people in the world give false lip service to him while they're checking people out at a store. You think Jesus is up there and be like, boy, I'm really glad that they said Merry Christmas without any feelings or heart on that day. Like, no, Jesus doesn't care about that. Jesus wants us to believe in such a way that we love him and turn him and our lives are then oriented around loving and following him. That is the kind of belief here. This belief is in the good news. And this is the best part. Because it's not just belief in, you know, this guy did something. It's belief in good news, something that can save your life. It's be like, yeah, I can, like, protect you from dying from this terrible disease just like this thing but this is like jesus this can save your life it's good news the christmas the story of christmas is our savior who came to earth to save sinners by his atoning death on the cross by which he completely pays the penalty for our sin, and we not bear it no more, nor live in fear day by day, thinking that we just didn't quite add up enough. That's the good news, Jesus Christ. It means citizenship in an everlasting kingdom. You know, maybe Canada's going to things, and, you know, it's sad it's my country but it's like i'm a citizen of heaven like i agree with the leader there it's my king jesus christ <laughs> citizenship in the kingdom that's already won the war and christmas is every day the good news is for us prodigals that the Father sees us while we are still far off and runs, takes us, puts on a robe and a ring and kills the fatted calf. The gospel is all the who's down in Whoville who invite the Grinch in to carve their very own roast beast. In that story, in the gospel, like, we are the Grinch. <laughs> the Who's are God, and we get invited into the feast. Like, that's the gospel. The gospel is knowing that you are a child of God. And despite our families being pulled apart, we are adopted into the family of God. Where we are cared for, loved, accepted, protected, and inheriting an inheritance far more than we could ever imagine. The gospel is like being a tree planted by deep waters so that even when the dry times come, the pandemic rages, fear cripples. We can still bear fruit with patience, because we're drinking from the deep water of Jesus Christ himself.
So the worst Christmas song of all time is John Lennon's So This Is Christmas. Okay, I'm just going to say that. <laughs> not just because it reminds me of Imagine, which is the worst song of all time, not just Christmas song. But it's so anemic. It's so anemic. It's like it goes, so this is Christmas and a happy new year. Let's hope it's a good one without any fear. Yeah, I was just like, the best we have to offer for Christmas in the world. The best we have to offer is like, hey, maybe the Vietnam War ended. Maybe it'll be a good year. Let's hope. You know, a lot of people saying that 2019, and they're like, let's hope it's a good year. And it wasn't. Because all the world has to offer is like, oh, maybe it'll be good. You know, maybe it's going to be terrible. Maybe 2021 will have us wishing for the good old days of 2020. We don't need anemic hope for better days for Christmas. Because Christmas is done. The war is won by Jesus Christ. The only thing we hope for is Jesus to come quickly and make all things right. And so, before he comes, I only offer you the same declaration of Jesus. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel.